Before I knew it, I didn't believe them. But here I am, and here we are, class of 2017. It's hard to believe the anxious young freshman who walked on campus four years ago, hovering toward the first recognizable faces identified within the massive crowd of terrifying human contact. The kid who had known only two of the people on campus for more than a few months has become what I am today, has done what we're all, all about to celebrate today, our transition into adulthood. I know many of you out there who are underrepresented by these typical inspirational speeches, hold similarly dark perceptions of our beginnings in a high school class. I'm not here to lie and tell you it's easy within this anxiety-filled world to go off to college and make new friends. I'm, here, I'm going to tell you it's a challenge, one I know we all can face and come out successful, socialized adults. We must resist these anxieties, not ignore them. I do not intend to worry anyone more so than they already are of the significance of this moment in their life. Rather, I intend to be honest about the challenges we face, not only as a class, but as a generation. By some standards, class of 2017, being the last graduating class of students mainly being born in 1999, we are the final graduating millennials. Many claim we are entitled, many claim we are lazy, many seem to have this age-old belief that the next generation has some sort of serious issue that must obviously be solved. Millennials have been blamed with the destruction of entire markets, with the weakening of capitalism, and the daring rejection or resistance of materialistic traditions pushed on, them, on us, such as when Forbes later noted in their article, why are millennials buying diamonds? Well then, Regardless, we are a pretty powerful generation, aren't we? Many of you here today hold this feeling of contempt for our generation. I ask none of you to stop considering the importance of teaching us to be less entitled and become the hardworking generation we can be, as the mentoring is necessary and greatly appreciated. For the wisdom of aging this world is invaluable. I would simply ask of you to contemplate what good could possibly come from the easiest coping technique of judging an entire generation without any purpose of complaint. There is some serious constructive criticism due to our generation and any younger generation throughout history that we collectively must understand in order to grow. Well, with all the progress of our society, do not become complacent. Do not have the entitled attitude they claim we have. The moment we become complacent and assume the rights we have today are self-evident truths is the moment a demagogue can divide us without worry of resistance. Rather, we should be anxious for the status of our rights, which we seem to think are protected by sitting on the couch and gossiping about which politician is best at giving us them. While I certainly have my own opinion, my point in continuing to feel the burn is not about Bernie himself. It is about political involvement from people of all sides. If you have researched regulations and law and believe in your heart that your right to bear arms within a recently regulated militia is being infringed upon, then get involved and make a change. If you feel your right to free speech is being limited, resist. If you think the right to due process in the establishment clause is in question by laws targeting specific faiths, resist. My point in resistance is not about political ideology. It's about humanity and a patriotic de dedication to protect the self-evident truths drawn out by our founding fathers and amended as our society has changed. Before I conclude, I want to express just how thankful I am for the support I've received on this campus and around the community of the Central Coast. Mr. Denno, early on we had our differences. I love Mrs. Johnson as her principal, as many of you did, but sometimes resistance is in some way important, and I believe I can speak for the majority of our class in saying we are proud of you maintaining the warm and accepting spirit many Nipomo students were worried would be lost. You coming into an upset student body, sought out and resisting any means of this spirit fading, I think has grown our community immensely. Thank you for taking on that role. Thank you also to the many mentors I've found who have helped me, in, who helped me find solace on this campus, whether it be in Mrs. Blue's, Mrs. Kelly's, Mrs. Wax, or Mr. McConnell's classrooms. I couldn't have done this without your well-intentioned nagging. Well, with all we've been through these four years, I just have to say thank you to Hannah Hamill for coming back to Napomo both at the beginning of this senior year at perfect timing and helping me recuperate from my worst social and academic semester ever. And now, just in time of graduation, despite all that has gone on in your life. Finally, thank you to the faces I first recognized as mission prior. The kids were always there for me under the quad when I played football with or you know, that I met there after I seemingly abandoned them junior year. And yes, that includes Angel Marquez, who I unwittingly promised I would mention because I used his fidget spinner once. <laughs> Thank you, Napomo, for instilling my permanent, heartfelt Titan pride that I'll bring with me wherever I go. Congratulations, class of 2017. You've done it. Woo! <laughs> Our senior class president, Eric Frank.